In this video, we're going to look at the circle. To begin with, we're going to name circle parts and then we're going to move on to finding the area and the circumference of a circle. So let's go ahead and start with a circle. So here's my circle in the centre of the page. The distance around the outside is called the circumference. So let's go ahead and put this on. So here we have now the circumference. So writing this in, circumference. So we've got now, jotting that down, that is our circumference. So it's the distance around the outside. I'm now going to put on the centre of the circle. So we can say this is the centre. I'm now going to draw a line from the centre to the circumference. If we do that, we have a radius. So this line right here is called a radius. So let's go ahead and label that up. This is our radius. So radius will be just here. The next one we're going to have is a diameter. A diameter will go through the centre of a circle and it will meet the circumference either side. So if I go ahead and do that, let's do that one, the diameter could look like that. So that's what we call a diameter. So if we put this on, this now, writing this on, this is the diameter. The next one that I'm going to look at is a chord. A diameter is a special chord as it goes through the centre. A chord simply goes from one part of the circumference to another. So if I go ahead and do that, I can put on now a chord, and that is an example of a chord. We might have one down here, we might have one up here. It's entirely up to us where we put these on. So let's go ahead and label this up. So this now is a chord, C-H-O-R-D. We're now going to look at a tangent. A tangent touches the circumference of a circle. So if I go ahead, I could put one just here. Let's get a, an easier colour to see. Uh, we'll choose that one. That is an example of a tangent. So we have one point touching the circumference of a circle. So this point right here. If you want to think about this now as a barrel with a plank on, that is an example of a tangent. So let's go ahead and write that on. So tangent, we can write like so. We can look at naming some of these parts and we will come on to this in later videos. If we have a radius here and a radius here, this is called a sector. So what we have here is a sector. So if I now shade the sector, I'll go ahead and do that. This is a sector. So it's now this area enclosed by these two radii. Radii is the plural of radius. So this right here is going to be an example of a sector. We say that this is a minor sector as now it's less than 180 degrees in terms of the angle. This one would be the major sector. So let's go ahead and put that on and that is a sector. This here, the area now trapped between the chord and the circumference is called a segment. So this is now a segment. Let's go ahead and just do that. So we have now a segment. So writing this in, we can write segment. So segment is just there. What I'm now going to look at is this length right here. This is going to be part of the circumference and we can say that this is an arc. So that's an arc. So if I put AB, we would have now the arc AB. This is the minor arc. And the major arc is round the other way. So this is the smaller part and we call that now the minor arc. They're the main pieces of information we need to know about the circle. So if you're ever doing work with circle, these are some key facts to remember. What we're now going to do is go on and look at the area of a circle. The area is the space trapped inside. This is one of the formula that students seem to forget all the time. What we're going to have is that the area is equal to pi, pi is just a number, multiplied by r squared. r is the radius. So let's go ahead and look at a circle. There's the centre and we're now going to draw on a radius. So if I drew on a radius, it would look something like so. 
I'm going to say that my radius is going to be five centimeters. So this length from the center to the circumference is five centimeters. If I want to find the area, all I write in now is pi, which is just a number. It's about 3.14, and we multiply this by 5 squared. So that's going to give me pi multiplied by 25. When we do this on a calculator, it's going to give us 25 pi. That is an exact value. If we look at it on a calculator now, we can say 25, and we can just hit shift pi. That will give us 25 pi, and we can say that's going to be 78.5, and this will be centimetres squared, and that's correct to one decimal place. So 78.5, it will be centimetres squared as it's an area, and that answer is to one dp, so one decimal place. If we just take a look now, pi, this number down here, is just simply, it's a non, it just keeps going on and on, but it's about 3.14. So it's just a number here. On the front of your exam paper, it says generally that you can use 3.14. So in this case, if you didn't have a pi button, 3.14 times by 5 squared, which we can put in, and that will give us something very similar. 78.5 exactly. But remember, the reason these are different is because pi keeps going on. So you're adding a bit more than this value. So that gives us now the area. So what we have is pi r squared. It's pi multiplied by the radius squared. Let's have another circle now. And what we're going to do is look at the area of this circle. This time we're going to have a diameter. So the diameter goes from the circumference to the circumference. I'm going to write that this is going to be the center, and I'm going to say that the diameter is 12 meters. We know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. What we want is the radius. If we look at the diameter, the diameter is two lots of the radius. So this is six meters, and this is six meters. It's hugely important that we half this first. So what we can say is that the area is going to be pi multiplied by six squared. Six squared is going to give us 36. So this is going to give us pi multiplied by 36. On your calculator, it will give you the exact value, which is 36 pi, and we can now give that to one decimal place. If you want, you can press 36 times by pi, but you don't have to use the multiplication button. That's going to give me now 113.1, and that will be to, uh, to the nearest decimal place, so one decimal place. So 113.1, and it will be meters squared. So let's just go ahead and check that. So we've got now 0.1, and that is to one decimal place. A common error is that students square the 12, multiply it by pi, and half their answer. So if we did this now, and we did 12 squared multiplied by pi, we're going to end up now with a much larger value. We've got 452. If I divide that by 2, this is not the correct area, as we can quite clearly see. So if you have a diameter, make sure you go ahead and half your answer. Let's look at another scenario. Let's look at a scenario where we have a semicircle. So this is a semicircle. We'll be told it's a semicircle. And let's make this slightly more challenging. Let's say that this is AB. And we're told now that AB is equal to 3 kilometers. What we want to do is find the area of the semicircle. So if AB is equal to 3 kilometres, then A to the middle would be 1.5, and we'd have 1.5. What I'm going to do is find the area of a circle that has a radius of 1.5 kilometres, and then I'm going to half my answer. So what we can say then is the following. We can say that the area of the circle would have been pi multiplied by 1.5 squared 
So what I need to do is divide my answer by 2. So let's go ahead in the calculator and we can say now that this is going to be 1.5 and you can put this in any way you want. 1.5 squared times by pi and then we're going to divide our answer by 2. So that gives us 9 over 8 pi and that is 3.53 and we'll do this one to two decimal places. So this is going to give me 3.53 and that will be kilometers squared. Remember, we're working with an area and our answer will be given as a squared value. Whether it's millimetres, centimetres or metres, it will always be squared. So that is the area of a circle. The area is the space trapped inside. Let's now look at the circumference of a circle. As we saw before, the circumference is the distance around the outside. So let's now get a circle up and we'll do a circle and look at the distance. There are two different ways that you could write this. We could write that the circumference, which we call c, is equal to 2 pi r. So that's 2 times by pi times by the radius. Or we can say that the circumference is pi d. This is pi multiplied by the diameter. We saw before that why this is going to work. Because if we have a diameter, we have now 2 of these radii. So if we add the two here, we're going to get a diameter, and that is why you double. So it's saying two times by the radius times by pi, or now the diameter times by pi. Let's look at an example, and we will put on a radius. So let's put a radius on, that will be good. And we will say now that this radius is going to be, let's say, two meters. So this is going to be two meters. What we want to do is find the circumference, which is the distance around the outside. So the circumference will be 2 times by pi times by the radius, which is going to be 2. That gives us 4 pi. In the calculator, we can find that answer. And this time, I'm not going to use pi. I'm going to use 3.14, just to show now that you can do this value and on any uh, paper, this would be acceptable. So if you don't have pi, 3 times by 1, uh, 4 times by 3.14, that's going to give us now, and we'll say that this is going to be 12.6, and that is to one decimal place. So we can say 12.6, and this will be metres. That is to one decimal place. Remember here, we're looking at the distance. It's not metres squared, that's an area. If you think about this now, if I extended this and I had now the diameter, so let's go ahead, the diameter would be equal to 4. And we can look at that now and think to ourselves, we can see how we could just multiply pi by the diameter. So that gives us now the circumference of a circle. Let's now look at a slightly more challenging problem. What we're going to do is look at the perimeter of a semicircle. So this one now is a semicircle, and we're going to say the following. What we're going to have then is this point, this is going to be A, this is going to be B, and we want to find the perimeter of the shape. So we'll be told something along the lines of AB is going to be equal to 8 centimetres. So let's have a look at what we need. We need this arc right here, which is half of the circle. So I can say that the circumference of the circle would have been now pi, or we could say 2 pi r, or we could say that the circumference is going to be equal to pi times by the diameter. So this is what we saw in the last part. So what I can say now is that the arc AB will be equal to, and remember, I have the diameter. AB is going to be 8, so I'm going to say it's going to be 8, times by pi or 8 pi but I need to divide my answer by 2 as all I've got is half of that circle. So that's going to give me now 4 pi. So in the calculator we can write that down. So let's do 4 pi. So I'm going to use pi this time and we'll see the slight variation in the last part. So we can see that this is going to be 12. So writing this in 12.56 dot 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 and so on and so forth 
Now we need to add the 8. So what we can say then is that the perimeter of the shape, so the perimeter, let's write this in, perimeter, that looks good, perimeter, is going to be equal now to 8 plus the 12.56 dot dot dot. And remember, this is going to be in meters. So all I'm doing is adding the additional part. So I can put plus 8, and that gives me now 20.6 correct to one decimal place. So we can say that this is going to be equal to now 20.6 meters, and that is to 1 dp. So there we go. There is some basic work with the area and the circumference of a circle.